Okay, now let's try to execute this thing simultaneously. So what I want is I want to, of course, they are running at the same time. But what I want here is I want to execute hi and hello one after the other. So example, if you can see the output here, we are printing so many highs and then we are going for the hellos, right? How do we do that? So the thing is you cannot control your scheduler. You can only suggest your scheduler to give the priority. So yeah, we have a concept of threads priority as well. Example, we have two threads, right? We have obj1, obj2. And we have a concept of threads priority. So let's say, let's, I just want to understand what is the current priority of the thread. So I can say obj1 dot, there's a method called get priority, which will give you the current priority of a thread. Okay, let's try to print this. Let's see what, let's see what happens. Compile, there is an issue. Okay, we forgot to put one round bracket and compile this code and run. You can see it is printing all this thing and uh, we got thread priority where? Yeah, it's here. So you can see we got five. Okay, so since we are uh, starting the threads after printing the priority, you can see that's why the, we got the value first. But we got the priority as five. Now, what is this priority? What's the range, basically? So the, the range of the priority goes from one to 10. So one is the least priority, 10 is the highest priority or maximum priority. And five is default priority, which is normal. Okay, so by default, every thread will be having a normal priority. So what you can do is you can change the priority of a thread uh, maybe you want the second thread to have a higher priority. So you can say obj dot set priority and you can mention the value. So of course you can mention one, which is the lowest, or you can mention 10, which is the highest, or you can use some constants. So thread class has some constants, which we can use. Example, we have max priority. We got min priority. We got norm priority, right? So if you want to specify maximum priority, you can do that with the help of this constant. Otherwise, you can also say, let's say if you want to set the priority nine, so you can say max priority minus one, that will be nine, right? But then by doing this, it's not like you will get all hello first and then it will be high. So even if you see, we are printing high and then it is printing hello and it's still high, hello, high, hello. It's, it's working in uh, simultaneously. The only thing is when you are specifying that this, the, the priority for this thread is the maximum, you are basically suggesting to your scheduler, hey, you know, this thread should get a highest priority. It's not like scheduler will give you that priority. Scheduler is, is see, different scheduler have different algorithms to work with. And if it feels okay, now we have multiple threads and they are reaching to a point at the same time. Scheduler can say, okay, now I will say the priority. Or maybe a scheduler will also see who will take the lowest time? So if there's a thread which will take less time, so it, it might go for that one. So again, as I mentioned, different scheduler has a different algorithm to work with. Using uh, priority, you can only suggest what should be done. Okay, that's one. Uh, so we know now how to set the priority and get the priority. Apart from that, if you still want to make this work, one thing we can do here is, after printing high, see what is happening is, as a scheduler will give you some time to execute, right? So let's say scheduler says, Hey, thread A, you can execute for, let's say one millisecond. And we were assuming that in one millisecond, it will print one high, but no, my machine is so fast. In, in fact, most of the machines are so fast nowadays, right? Uh, in that one millisecond, it is executing this number of highs. How do I control this? So one thing we can do is after printing every high, let's ask our thread to wait. Okay, so the way you can do that is by using thread dot. There's a method called sleep. Now in this sleep, you can basically mention for how much time you want this thread to sleep. So in, you have to specify that in milliseconds. So when you say sleep, you are asking your thread to wait, wait for 10 milliseconds and then continue. Okay. So what we are doing, basically trying to do is once you print high, it, this particular thread, the A thread will go into wait stage, right? Waiting stage. And then the B thread will execute hello. And again, once B thread done its work, you can just put a sleep there as well. Now, the only thing is this sleep method will throw, as I remember, we talked about checked exception. So the sleep method basically throws a interrupted exception. So what you have to do is we have to put a try catch or we can say throws, but let's put try catch here. So with this suggestion, I can say surround with try catch and our job is done, right? And just to simplify this, what I can also do is I can put this in one line. So you can see we got try catch and then just to reduce the number of lines we have, we I'm just writing that in one line, the catch block. The same thing can be done for the hello as well. 
and you can see we got the sleep here as well so we got two threads and now i hope it will work let's compile and run okay oh, see that we are getting hi hello in sequence uh, if you start from here you can see we got hi hello hi hello and then go on but if you can see this is where you got two th two hello at the same time now it is possible that after doing this calculation after doing this iteration of hi hello two threads are going back to schedule at the same time and schedule has given the chance to hello first so it all depends upon how you work with threads how i mean not you you can only make multiple threads it all depends upon your schedule how to run this, run this and that's why when you play games sometimes you know you can see some of the characters are not moving in a sequence or not in sync because the threads are not working properly there so as a programmer you can just optimize it more okay you cannot control it one thing i can do is if i want the hello to come after that maybe i can just put a a sleep here as well maybe of Two milliseconds. So after, so I I just want both the both of them to start with a gap in between of two milliseconds. So compile and run. And if you can see, I hope there will not be any high hello which got two time print. You can see now it, it's all ones. It's because there is a gap it, in between high and hello who reaches to the uh, schedule at the same time. So yeah, that's how we can optimize. Again, as I mentioned, you, we are just trying to optimize it. There's no guarantee that you will get this output every time. Oh, we got it. Can you see that? We got two hellos here. Again, my idea was to just to optimize it and it depends upon your schedule how to work with this. Or maybe I can just, if I make it five, then we can control that. So try this out and let me know how it is for you in your machine. So we have understood two methods, uh, two things from this video. One is the priority. So you can set the different priority for the threads, min priority, max priority, and normal priority. And you can set any number between one to 10. And by doing this, you are only suggesting to your scheduler to give the current thread maximum priority, if you set it that way. And then we have talked about sleep. Now, when you say sleep, it actually goes into a waiting stage. Again, we'll talk about uh, what is that waiting stage or block state a bit later, but uh, yeah, that's a stage which follows. Yeah, so that's it from this particular video. And let's see some more concepts in the upcoming videos.